Well, today I'm coming to you live from my recording studio, dining room table, and card playing area uh, to talk to you about the Cambium Networks V3000. And I'm gonna take some time, show you what it is, how it works, what you need to get it hung up on your tower, how you're gonna power it, and all the boxes that are needed to get it all together. Um, I put on my finest pair of sweatpants during our quarantine, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about some things that I really find unique and interesting, some things that are really weird, and why this product is going to absolutely demolish the competition when it comes to market, which is now. All right. Here it is, the V3000. Uh, this system comes piecemeal, so you're going to order various bits and pieces and parts and accessories that are going to all add up to your one singular radio that is going to be designed for a long-distance point-to-point link. Uh, I just mentioned briefly that this thing is going to rip because it's able to do 7.6 gigs uh, on a point-to-point -point link and give you those distances up over one to two miles. Um, I'm gonna include a little bit of information here. I wanna talk to you a little bit about the rain rates of this. Uh, from what was provided me from the manufacturer, if you're going V3000 to V3000, you can reliably do up to, let's see here, uh, around 0.8 to 0.6 to 0.8 miles and still have 99.99% availability at one gigabit, and 0.6 miles will give you uh, two gigs of throughput, uh, that being a full duplex number, so you'd be looking at four gigabits respectively. So you can sell those one gigabit plans on this in a heavy rain region, having that availability of 99.99 uh, up to about 0.7 miles, and the no rain numbers on this are that you can do easily two miles and still have that high end throughput that you're looking for of that seven gigabit number. Um, some things that make this a little bit unique and different are, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but it's buried back there. So when you order this equipment, you're going to have to order the radio, which comes in a pretty large box. You're going to have to order a dish which comes in an even larger box, uh, much lighter, but much larger box. An optional thing that you can do is the telescope mount. Uh, the idea is, is that at the top of the radio, you can put a scope on there and use that to align. I recommend getting one of these, um, and I'll get into a second why. Uh, this is a really narrow radio, and it's gonna be difficult to align. Another optional accessory that uh, comes highly recommended from Cambium is the precision mount. Uh, I'm going to do an entire video just on this mount alone. Uh, it, I think it really uh, justifies it, and I'm going to go through and talk about why I think that you should use this in most applications. There is a less expensive mounting option, but uh, we'll get into that a little more in that video, and I'm going to include a link to that below. And here we are, the V3000. As I mentioned, comes in two pieces. So you've got this big dish, and then separately on the back, you have your radio. So first off, it's heavy. You know, I was expecting this to be a lot lighter. Uh, something that's based on a Wi-Fi standards, you kind of think to yourself, oh, this is going to be a really small light radio. And when I was talking to the manufacturer Cambium, they mentioned that there's an incredibly large amount of processing power it takes to not just be able to provide that head end data number, but to have the sustained amount of packets that are going to have to be slammed through this radio. So so they're not just out there to give it that, that head end number that everyone wants to hit on the speed tests, but they truly want thousands of people to be able to connect through this radio and not have the bottleneck of the processor. So it has big, it's big, it's large, it's built to dissipate a lot of heat. Similar to the distribution node, uh, the V. 3000 uh, or the V5000, 
this has three ports on the bottom. You've got your power supply port. You've got an auxiliary power port, which you could hook up a camera or another subscriber module if you wanted to do some sort of longer range link with a failover of five gigahertz. And then you also have an SFP plus port. If you're gonna be needing to do over a gigabit of data, you're gonna heavily utilize that SFP plus port. Uh, first saw this design uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they had initially shown how they're gonna do this at, at the Wisp Loser show in Las Vegas. And I initially thought when they showed it to me that half the dish was missing and it's, it really is a unique platform. The weatherproof gland does come with this. If you're gonna utilize the other ports, you're gonna to wanna to get uh, additional glands which are available for purchase. And what doesn't come with is a power supply. Most people that are gonna be using these already have a PoE plus switch, so they're not gonna to need to buy the individual power bricks. Cambium saves you a couple bucks on that, and so you would be using your own PoE power switch. If you do want, they do have a 60 watt capable, which is a five gigabit PoE switch. So you could run five gig on this over internet if you want, or over ethernet if you'd like to. While talking to Cambium Networks about this equipment, I had a lot of questions. You know, why is it so piecemeal? Why is that big tilt mount bracket um, necessary? And uh, it does come at a pretty, pretty lofty price point. And so I wanna make sure that I talk about that a little bit. This radio has a very, very narrow beam. <clears throat> From what they've told me, it's not even one degree, it's 0.8 degrees wide. So with a 0.8 degree wide beam, you have a need for scopes to scope it in to make sure that you're getting it perfectly aligned with the other end, especially if you're in point to point mode. So two V3000s talking to each other in point to point are gonna be very difficult to align. And once you do get it aligned, you're gonna wanna lock it in. And this mounting bracket lets you be extremely precise about that. So this isn't gonna necessarily work from tower to tower that are very far away as the towers move and sway, just like the camera did when I hit it. Um, you're gonna you're gonna lose that alignment, and that had typically been how everything ended. But there, this is a little bit different, and there are some caveats. And this is something that I truly found interesting and didn't realize until today that this has the beam forming antenna in it, just like the V1000 and the V3000. The V3000 being the distribution node that this can be a subscriber on, and the V1000, which is the smaller subscriber that has an 80 degree wide beam width. So you're looking at this, not even one degree wide. How are you gonna make this effective? How are you gonna peek it in? And what happens if you catch a little bit of wind? Well, this has the beam steering built into it as well. I didn't think it did, and I was pretty surprised on something that had a very narrow beam width. But that beam steering allows it to be a little bit wider than 0.8 degrees, and so you start widening that, and it actually gets to point, or sorry, it gets to four degrees of beam steering. The idea being is that if you're using the scope and you're using the precision mount, and you can peek this in, you can get it within that four degrees. And if you can get it to the middle of four degrees, as the wind adjusts and these radios are torquing on the towers and the buildings from each other, the and especially and. <laughs> And specifically with the wind, you do have a little bit wider of an area for these units to be twisted and torqued and still be able to maintain your connection. Um, so a lot less, you know, having to realign with, like you would with the typical 80 gigahertz millimeter wave links. Uh, beam forming is, is a game changer on this. And, and I think between the beam forming, the high end throughput speed, the five gigabit capability over ethernet, and the ability to precision mount this, and also having that really long range, uh, seems like a really cool product, and I've already gotten some feedback from some people using this in the field, and it is the real deal. It, it goes farther and goes faster than anything else on the market in this frequency. So let's talk price. What is this gonna set you back? Um, the individual radio is $599, the dish is $75, and add that up and the discount off of list price, you're looking at street price of around $540 to these. A um, little bit on the pricier end, uh, there are some other competitors on the market that do about half this speed, and are, they're a little bit less expensive. So what sets this apart? Um, it's gonna have way more processing power. 
it's going to be able to handle those sustained packages. They're going to be able to handle the high user amounts. Um, you're going to be able to stretch this a little further by using the scope and the tilt mounting bracket. Uh, that, that precision tilt mount bracket does come in at a pretty hefty price of $120. Do I think you need it? Um, no. Is it going to be something that will make your life easier? Yes, definitely. Um, and will it make it so that you can sleep well at night on windy nights? Absolutely. So if it were my money, I would be deploying it with that. Uh, but I imagine a lot of people probably won't. This product is part of the Cambium Networks CN Wave portfolio, which includes the V5000 distribution node for point to multi point access, and also these units mesh together. Uh, here's the universal mounting bracket for the V5000 with instructions on the box, and the power supply and plan for that unit. The other radio in the portfolio is the V1000, which is a one gigabit subscriber module that's low gain, could also be used as a point-to-point -point link, comes with a power supply and a hose clamp. And the third radio in this product line is the V3000, which is a high gain subscriber module. And this is the precision mounting bracket for the unit, the telescope mount for alignment, and the Dish and radio can be seen here with that telescope mount. And that is the high gain subscriber module or point to point link. And there's the power supply and gland for that unit as well. I'm gonna include some links below. I also reviewed the V1000, uh, which is a small low gain subscriber module. And I reviewed the V5000, which is the distribution node. Uh, this can be a subscriber module on that or its own point to point and I'll include those links below. Also, if you have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you. And I'll also include a link below on where to buy this.